Hi there, welcome to Art with Corb. I'm Frank Corb, your painting instructor for the day. Today we're going to be talking about different techniques in acrylic painting. And there's lots of different techniques that we can use. I'm only going to cover, oh, about 12 of them. So hang in there, we're going to do this really fast. a worksheet that you can follow along with as well and that'll be attached below so thank you so much for that we're going to talk about 12 different or so ways in which we can work with and blend acrylic paints um, and we're going to start with blending and distinct hard-edged brush strokes we're going to try some glazing techniques we're going to try some collage and additive. If you notice, I've already started some of these. We're going to work with high relief or impasto staining, scraffito, wipeout, and tonking, scumbling, this one's actually pretty much finished, and then as well as color shifting. Before we get going, though, what I'd like to do is talk about the idea of having a colored or a toned background to your surface. Uh, in this case, what I've done is I've created a toned background that was simply one solid um, level of, well, it's sort of one solid level of orange. And so this is just kind of a whole background toned image. If you want, what you can also do is you can create a tonal variation in the piece where you might be using something that more closely resembles how your finished painting might be, where you've got your darker shadows or your highlights within the piece. Um, and, and so this helps give that painting an underpainting. It helps you as a painter realize where things are going to perhaps be in the work um, for a painting. And then what it also does is it helps give the under painting, it gives actually the whole of the painting um, a feeling. It can warm up the painting, it can cool down the painting depending on um, what your under painting is. As I try to mix up an orange real quick or a darker orange to cast my shadow. So you got a feel for what that whole of the piece might be. Now I'm using a, a staining technique, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, um, but, but this, is, this is an underpainting. And so you might choose to do that, whether it's a single tone like I had begun with, or if it is um, an overall tonal feel for the painting. So let me just kind of wrap up a little bit here. I'm running out of paint, so I'm gonna to have to pause for a second and refill some of my paints. No, I won't pause. So I kind of block in these colors. Now, again, you notice that I'm not spending a whole lot of time worrying about whether it's perfect or not. I'm just getting the overall ideas done. Oh, give me one second, I'm gonna back up, move over here. Let's get a little Andy Warhol behind me here. Oh, that's even better. There we go, get a little of that glare gone. All right, so the very first technique we're going to look at is going to be blending and or distinct brush strokes. So blending gives you a nice soft transition between colors and hard edge gives you, well, what it says. It gives you very distinct very hard edges between your pieces. Now I've got a lot of this up top finished, so I'm gonna work in the bottom. So if I were gonna go in a blended area, I think purple is the used color I'm using in my grounds here. So if I were blending, I might lay my color down, and this is really wet acrylic paint right now versus dry acrylic paint, I suppose. And I'm gonna put that in, come to an edge there because that's where my painting transitions. 
And if it's going to get darker over here, I might lay in another layer of a darker color, darker purple. And one of the techniques that I always encourage and use is I always mix my darker color into my lighter color on my palette. Um, I'm kind of speeding through this for you all. Um, so I'm not using a palette knife at this point. I'm using the tip of my brush. But I tend to, in my own studio, when I'm painting, I tend to use my palette knife quite a bit. Um, so I've got some darker purples. I can bring a little bit of white into that to lighten that up. And since this is a lot of wet on wet paint, softly blending that in. And like up in there, I'm trying to get a real nice soft blend to it. So I might be coming back with a drier brush and a cleaner brush. To soften that and blend that together. Becoming a little transparent in here. So I'll come back over that later. Now this is a flat that I'm using. The type of brush is a flat. And so this might be good for, oh, I don't know, blending things like that. I do know. That's not true. I do know. Blending colors together like that. I'll also use other types of brushes for that. I'll bring out a round, kind of a well-loved round brush. And I can softly blend those edges together like that. Now, I don't have to blend out all of my brush strokes, but I can. I'm not going to. Now on the other side, we've got distinct brush strokes. So that's pretty good. We'll leave it like that. On the other side is distinct brush strokes or rather hard edge. Distinct brush strokes are different, I guess, than hard edge. Distinct brush strokes shows the mark making. I'm looking for hard edged here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I will have my color mixed up. And I'm mixing things on my palette, which in my case is a sheet of glass with a fairly gray card underneath it to neutralize the look of it. Um, but you can use paper plates, works well. So in this case, because I want it to get from light to dark, I'm going to be very particular about this. That's fun, in a phone call there. So this is gonna be a distinct brush stroke, very hard edge and kind of come up in here. This is where I would bring in a finer tip brush too. To pull my colors in. And you can see in the upper portion of this where I've really worked it, that I have very specific color transitions. Now I'm going to go back to my palette and mix up a little bit of a darker violet, becoming more of a blue violet, and bring that color in. And so I'm really paying close attention to the edges and that transition. And you can see that I, I smooth my brush around a lot. If I wanted this to be very, very particular, I might be a little bit more careful in my brush strokes, try to smooth things out. And what I might also do is come back and put a second coat on or just use thicker paint. It's gotten a little bit washed out. So that's blending versus hard edged versus distinct. I keep saying distinct brush strokes and I'm just gonna stick with it. The next one I've got in our list of approaches is glazing. All right. And now glazing brings in a whole nother medium, and that is a gel medium. And in my case, I have a high relief, uh, a high solid gel mat. 
You can also get it in a uh, glossy medium. And with this, you mix that medium in to your acrylic paint. So I'm gonna take some of my gel medium, kind of mix that up a little bit. That's a lot. Now I always have a clean palette knife when I go into here so that I can keep that, wool, uh, keep that white, keep it nice and clean. And so now what I'll do is I'll take my matte medium, my gel medium, this is matte medium. I'm gonna scrape it onto my palette. And then I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna work in that purple a lot on these paintings, I think. I'm gonna take my gel medium and I'm gonna mix that into my, my purple. Now, generally speaking, and I, I say this, um, I say it and I try to think it when I paint it, um, but practice doesn't always happen the same way that teaching does. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, but I've been painting for a long time and so my techniques are a little bit different at times. And so what I'll do here is in the glazing portion, I'm gonna take that paint and I got a round brush here now. I'm going to start to layer that color in. And what happens is this glaze is transparent. The, the matte medium in this case is a transparent medium. It's, a, it's, a, it's an acrylic medium. And so I can layer these very thin transparent layers of paint down And then when it dries, I can go back in and layer more over the top of that. And so while this area dries, we'll just say that it's dry. Probably takes a few minutes, 10 minutes maybe, probably not even that. I can bring another layer of another violet, bring a little bit of red in here. And so I'm just mixing a little bit more paint into that same body and it's been thinned down or, or it's been made more transparent and I can layer, I can glaze more layers. The Renaissance 1497 through 1523. Someone's gonna check my dates on that. I think I'm a few years off. But glazing was wonderful during the Renaissance because oil paints were invented and we could really get a very different feel for the, the sense of form from these fairly flat matte modeled uh, images. And they weren't all that, but you know, we had this really different approach to painting because of glaze. And now in the, uh, the acrylic world, the 1960s when acrylic paints were invented, again, someone's gonna date check me on that and throw some shade in my comments and that's fine. You've got a different way. So I can glaze and layer and layer and probably put another layer in there after it's dry to just really build up this wonderful sense of depth and form in, in this piece through glazing. So that, that's a little bit of glazing in this piece. I love glazing, glazing's wonderful. Okay, glazing, next. I'm gonna run out of spaces behind me to put things. Collage and additive. Now collage is where we take bits and pieces of paper, and I'm gonna use glazing in this one too. Um, and actually, before I even start with the glazing, I'm gonna take my gel medium, which I've set aside as a transparent form, and I'm going to put some gel medium just on my paper or canvas or whatever material you're using. 
And then I'm going to take my collage material and I'm going to put that down. And then oh, a little red on my hand. This is where I wear a smock. I'm going to take more of that gel medium over the top of it to essentially glue it in place. So I've laid down some gel medium to start with. And now I'm putting more gel medium over the top of it to glue it in place. And I can do some small bits and pieces. I'll probably fill this space up. And because I'm dealing with an example, I'm not worried about the edge of my picture plane as much as you might be if you're working on a canvas, but I can also come back in here later and trim this out. Now, as this dries, I can now start to build over the top of it. And this is where I talked about having the idea of the, the glaze. Again, this is that purple section. So I'm gonna take that same purple that I had earlier. And now I can glaze over the top of this and allow that collage material, whether it's text or pictures or whatever you got back there, colored paper, um, I can let that show through. And one of the nice things is that text or the imagery becomes an important part of your composition. One of the other things that I really appreciate and enjoy about collage and other materials is it adds a new texture to your painting, your artwork, that you might not otherwise get if you're simply using um, paint. Now this other one, this one on top here, is an additive. And I use Rolatex. Um, it's what we use to, uh, to add texture to walls, Rolatex. You can find this in your local hardware store. And if you go to your local museum, you'll probably see it in a couple of paintings. And what I do is I simply take my Rolatex and I, with my palette knife, I could use my, my brush, I suppose. I take this and I mix it into the paint. I use sand. I'll go to the beach volleyball court and grab some sand and do that as well. And so I'll just mix this into it. Um, you can use dried bits of paint anything. You can use buttons, little pebbles perhaps, and I'll mix this into here. And then using my brush, I'll paint this into that space. It might take you a little bit more paint to do that, but you're going to get this wonderful texture in the piece. You can really build it up tall or you can simply have it be a surface quality, just a, a low surface addition to it. Okay, so there's that. Getting messy here. By the way, I'm using my favorite form of rag for this is just old t-shirts. And the uh, Milwaukee Brewers did some uh, good stuff a few years back. I don't know how, I don't know when you're watching this, but um, it's an old Milwaukee Brewer t-shirt. Probably not official. I'm sure it was something I found on, I don't know. Anyways, that's enough. Just babble, babble, babble. So those are those two techniques, collage and additive. Next is impasto. And impasto is, is the use of paint at a very thick, you can see the brush strokes, you can see the texture of the paint. And so I've got some modeling paste to add to that. And so this is modeling paste. And much like I did with my gel medium and with my uh, roll of text is I'm just going to take that modeling paste and mix it into my paint. Doing a lot of, uh, purples. We'll, we'll stick with the purple today for this piece. Mix that in. I 
And then what I'll do is use my brush and I'll paint that in a little thicker. Keep those brush strokes high. There we go. So I'll take this paint, this acrylic paint with modeling paste in it. I'm gonna paint that in and leave my brush strokes visible. I can also do a similar thing using gel medium, matte medium which is good, gel uh, gloss medium is fine too. But what I'm doing here is I'm paying really close attention to leaving those individual brush strokes visible. And so there's that approach. There's a little piece of additive of dried paint. And so that is impasto. Or high relief versus low relief. Okay. The next one that we have is staining. And staining is staining is similar to a glaze, but it, it doesn't have anything added to it. In fact, we stained the paper to start with when we, we toned it. You saw how I had taken that very, very thin um, acrylic orange and mixed it in. Uh, and so that was staining. So I've got uh, a good amount of layers of staining in this piece already, um, but we'll do, we'll do a few more. Let me just finish cleaning out these brushes. Thank you. And so staining, I will take my paint and I'm taking water, taking more water into the paint and just creating this really thin, thin, thin coat. And one of my other requests for every painting is, I always mix a couple of colors into my colors. As good as this cad red medium is, um, it's not the color I want and it's not gonna be the color you're gonna want. You gotta make your own colors. And so now I've got this very, very thin paint and I'm just gonna put it in. And again, this allows me to deal with a lot of wonderful layers of thin stains. You get to see some of the brush strokes underneath it. You can fade it out. Really do some wonderful painting here. And this is a pretty dry brush at this point. Bring that out. I can even take a little bit more water, just water, and soften my edges like that. And so that's staining. You can do all that through the whole piece. So staining. Scraffito, wipeout, and tonking are next. And scraffito is when I have an underpainting and I put wet paint over the top of it. We're gonna really work in that red today. I've already started this and I can paint in that red with scraffito. Get some more in here, fade that out. And then I'm going to take another device, a tool. I'll use the back end of my brush here. And I can scratch in through scumbling, through, um, I could use any sort of mark in the piece, but I'm gonna scumble here. Make some marks in there. So I can bring out some of that underpainting in the piece, get some of your aggression out in your painting. That's fine. Um, I could also use a, a sharper object like a palette knife to do that. One of the things I love about this is um, the material we work on is surprisingly strong and really go to town on the paper. Now, if you go too strong on the paper, you might tear through it. So just be aware of that. Wiping out is just like what it sounds like. It's where you take a, a rag or a, a Q-tip, no trademarks there and you, you wipe out an area. So I'm gonna paint in 
a little bit more on my sphere here. Kind of bring some more of that blue in. And where my highlight's going to be, and paint that in. And I can take just a, like I said, just a wet rag. And I can wipe it out. Can bring out that reflective light down in here. I can just wipe away some of that paint. Oh, school's done. Time to go home. <laughs> a few more things to do before we walk out the door. But that's wiping out. And the last one in this category, this section, is tonking. And this is where I'll take a piece of paper and I will put some color down. I'm going to go back to that purple ground area and paint this in. My More of my transparent glaze here. I'll paint that in nice and thick. So this is tonking. And I can press that paper down, rub it into place. And when I pull it off, I show a really interesting texture. So I'm really building these things up. A lot of this is great because you can really work it in layers and layers and layers. It's not just a one and done, which unfortunately so many early painters tend to think. You just pull one layer down and you're finished. It's a, it's a wonderful building up of layers and layers and layers. So that's Scraffito, Wipeout, and Tonking. Scumbling, oh good, I'm almost done. Scumbling is where, and we've kind of scumbled a little bit with our brush to kind of bring out images and bring out textures and colors, but scumbling is a very loose approach to painting. This, this one took me maybe a half hour to finish up, but I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my wet paint, my purple, and a little bit of blue to it, and rather than trying to have a nice smooth edge to things, I'm gonna put that paint in there and I'm gonna use some brush marks. I'm gonna use some mark making, some energy behind that to let those brush marks show. You can see it there in the wet space. I'll bring a little bit lighter, lost my white. Uh-oh, I want a lot of white. I am, there it is. Add a little bit of white to my palette. I can bring out a little bit lightness here in this purple section and show you some scraffito, some scumbling, 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 sorry. So I can scumble up in here and bring out a little bit of energy in this portion of the painting. And so scumbling is, is this, it's a much looser approach to the painting. I think I'm gonna to have to really rework this section. So happy with this painting, that's okay. Just a layer, just layers. But that is scumbling. Okay, not bad, happy with that. Loose, fresh, mark making. And finally, 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 and this is obviously a little bit different. I'm not using that sphere idea anymore. I drew out a bunch of circles and, and worked that. This is color shifting. And so with my color shifting, what I'm going to do is I am going to lay down a couple of different techniques for this one. I'm going to put one color on one end of my brush like this. And then I'm gonna put another color on the other side of my brush like that. And now I can, let's do it this way. I can layer my colors in and let them blend together like this. There's one approach to that. So I get this nice color transition there. Flip that around, go in the other direction. This one seems to be particularly thin. But I get this nice color transition there. 
and I can rework that a little bit more. But there's one approach. You really don't want to overdo it. You really don't want to overdo your marks, okay? And then lastly, I'm going to use three different brushes for this one. One for one color. I suppose I could just use two brushes, but this is how it's going to work. I'm going to lay down one color. Hmm. Running out of space here. I'm going to lay down one color over here. And I'm going to do all of this while it's still pretty wet. So I kind of fill this space in. I should have grabbed a smaller round brush, I think, for this. Oh, well, it's all good. A smaller flat. So I'll put this color in, and while it's still wet, I'm going to put another color. I'll go with a big contrasting white, mix up a light, light blue up in here. Nice tint of blue up here. And then I can scumble these together in the middle. And you might very well be able to get it to blend nicely just by using your big, thick, dirty brush. But what I like to do is I'll take a cleaner, drier brush and I will softly feather those together like that. I'll get my hand out of the way. And so I can, with a drier brush, I can feather that in and let that work. And so that is some color shifting. Okay. All right. And next. Oh, that's it. So we've done, we've done a lot. We've done color shifting. I got a backtrack here. We've done color shifting, scumbling, sgraffito, wipeout, and tonking. We've done staining. I think I had, there we go, impasto, collage, and additive. There he is, glazing, and finally blending, and distinct or hard edge things. This worksheet, the, the handout that I would give in my class or the, with links to examples and other images is available, I hope, below in our channel here. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can shoot me a note. Um, again, make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. I don't think I said that to start with, but uh, clean your brushes, always soap and water. Don't forget when you close up your acrylics, spritz them with some water, seal them up tight, and uh, thanks. Have a great day. Bye.